Parental discretion is advised. This week we get a visit from the Muns. We talk about Survivor Series indie fantasy teams. We have the indiest indie minute to ever indie in indie town. And we talk about the difference between a heart attack and a fake affair. All of that and more on this week's Wrestling Mayhem Show. Stick around. Hey everyone, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 346 from the studios here, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am Sorgatron, ready to get mayhem with you guys. Uh, with me, let's go around the horn. We got, first let's go to the couch. We got a pair of people on the couch right there. There's Chachi. Oh, um, Chachi, Chachi. At Chachi says, insert coin to begin.com. I introduced the familiar so we don't scare them with the unfamiliar. I know, I know, I know. There, right there. there he All is. my information... Chachi at Chachi says on the Twitter, uh, talk to me and I'll probably insult you. Just turned it out there. <laughs> <laughs> As we covered a little bit on Let's Play. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a little bit, little bit. Also join us for the very first time on the show, the Muns. Uh, Thanks for having me. First time caller. <laughs> and of course, Munz is one of the guys I was talking about. Maybe we'll get a little bit into it in the indie minute. Uh, but he's one of them. We were, I was talking about a, a bit ago, uh, uh, going to the Ring of Honor taping and that so experience. Awesome. And you sounded worse than I do right now oh, last Wednesday so awesome. afterwards. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Also with us, as usual, from the deep, dank, dark cave underneath the rock bed and the confluence of the rivers over in the north side is Papa Lunchbox. Uh, what's up, guys? This is Papa Lunchbox. My cave is no longer uh, dark and dank. I've had uh, some interior decorators come in. Uh, they put in some nice lights over there, uh, a little ambiance. I got my, uh, my uh, stationary droids here in the background. I am, however, at the confluence of the three rivers. I am in uh, uh, Sophie Mazislav's original nesting place. I took it over from myself. She has since moved on. She lived in the glass castle. Everybody knows that. Uh, but I've uh, taken over her domain. So uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm queer. No, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> Sorg, who's next? No, who's that's next? a different pot. That's a, but next up is the Wrestle Fan from San Antonio, Texas. I'm the sorry. Wrestle Fan because uh, San Antonio, Texas doesn't get all those adjectives, those fancy adjectives that Lunchbox got. But yes! Hey, wait. Uh, Go ahead, Chachi. Oh, you messed up his flow. What's I know, up? I know, I know. Okay. But this is important. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, be, due to the election uh, that we covered partly last week on the show for absolutely no reason other than the fact <laughs> that I was watching it, um, I, uh, a lot of states are starting, like uh, members of states are starting online petitions to secede from the United States. I saw that. Oh, crazy. yes. Uh, Texas... Uh, yesterday was up to twenty three thousand people. It's <laughs> uh, yeah, but but Texas is always doing right. That's <laughs> most of which aren't even from Texas. Bailey, so Bailey I would just like so. to point out. I would just like to point out that if this actually works, then we'll have a contributor from another country. That's we will be a world podcast. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out I there. Thought Wrestle fan was always from the world country though. Well, if you count from that, I'm from Canada, Canada, Cuba. Mexico. Oh, that's right. Cuba's in another country. We got a long live the Confederate from the chat room, by the way. Yeah, hopefully we'll succeed, which is a good chance because our governor's a fucking raging moron. But that's other stories. Why are we talking politics? Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> All right. Also, the guy that gives no fucks about politics is the Riz. But yeah, uh, shut up, the Riz. Are, are, are we supposed to talk? There's, there's someone. This is, this Not a, you. This is a podcast. This Not is, you. To say words. No. Say everyone, words. everyone, but you were allowed to talk. Chachi's going to say your promo for you. <laughs> Fuck you, Riz. He's going to face for radio. Well, I have to balance it out because uh, Papa Lunchbox last week promised less yelling at Riz. Oh, that's so yeah, or, gotta pick or, up that or, slack. So I have to, talk since, which is less than zero. There's a, there's a there's a new guy here, and we don't really talk to new guys. You're not allowed to talk. Like in, like in no, you're talking about in the hangout. That's in the hangout when we get girls and balls, Riz. In. What? Girls and balls? What? I think girls and balls. Oh, girls. I'm not the one who points at <laughs> shit, Russell fan. Girls and balls. 
<laughs> Girls and balls. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the pointer wrestle fan, so so you know, no, we'll hold that for the indie minute. Let's get no, right into yeah. it. No, we're Again, not, no, we're not it's a wrestling that. mayhem show. Uh, you can find out more about us over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can listen to the show, watch the show, however you want to consume us. Consume us. At iTunes, Blip TV, on your Roku box on the Blip TV app, on Stitcher, on Spreaker, thanks to John Fun, and every, anywhere else. Uh, look for our directories. If we're not there, let us know. We'll get in there. Um, also, you can contact us at that email address at Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. That's the hotline. You can drop a voicemail and let us know your thoughts with your voice. Uh, and you can also hit us up on Twitter at, at Mayhem Show. So please do that. So let's get the show kicked off. Oh, Wait hey. a minute. Buy the app. App. Buy the app. It's a dollar ninety nine. It's if, on iOS. If you the buy the app, I can eat a sandwich. Yeah, Amazon <laughs> App Store. Maybe a half a sandwich. Okay. Actually, uh, maybe uh, you can get a stick of gum. Uh, but go go check that out. It's a dollar ninety nine, and it gets you all the uh, it gets you all the episodes uh, and quick connects to uh, all the stuff I just everything. talked about to contact the show, as well as some um, as well as some exclusive footage. I, I don't want to. What? I don't want to. No. What? You don't want to see the extras on here. You don't? This, this is saying involves WrestleFan, a goat, and lots of KY. That is unsubstantiated. Don't 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 talk about DJ Lunch One thing I like do that. know is oh, we do talk KY. about a little That's bit so of behind Vaseline the scenes. And I am indeed the goat. Oh. That's right. <laughs> so he's making Papa Lunchbox butter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. He fits the in. Finest kind. He fits in. You churn that Spread butter, Spread that boy. shit over. Toast with jelly. Mind this kind. You churn that butter. So with that, please let's move it's on and get to does the voicemail. <laughs> or I'm sorry, the emails. Well, no, we have we have voicemail. Something. I don't... Something. What are we doing, Chachi? Uh, if you go back to November 7th... What? Fucking time. Uh, Bo Diggity sent in his uh, stump speech. Okay. He started early. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me, uh, l- l- we'll go ahead and read an email so I can pull up some voicemails well, here, sir. Okay, I'll read Mad Mike's. Okay, let me adjust your camera. I guess I bumped it. Hey, you are. Hey, guys. Wanted to dominate on all forms of media this week because I just had an amazing idea. Punk and Foley have been feuding technically for over a month now, despite not even being on opposing teams at Survivor Series anymore. What if the plan is for Punk and Foley to have a match at TLC? Either the T... Or the C, most likely. And then Punk brutalizes Foley so badly that now his buddy and former tag team partner, Dwayne, actually has a reason to feud with Punker now. Just something I thought of as I was sitting in my plastic condom suit at work. Yes, it's exactly how it sounds. White Alchemist ending transmission. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly how it sounds. Um... Excellent. Uh, next, we have what? Well, actually, I do have the voicemails queued up, slightly queued up here, so we can get right into that. Oh, well, fucking diggity! I see that we're starting stump speeches already. That's adorable. Let's start with number one. Bo diggity is running yet again for every single possible position that could possibly be won. <laughs> at the Mayhemics. Host of the year, I hosted once or twice. Guest host of the year, sure, did that a couple times too. <laughs> Caller of the year, that's not a question. You might as well give me the award now. Email of the year, possibly. This is what I bring to the table, everyone. No diggity is in, full force. I'm not bribing anybody with anything. You just respect the amazement that I bring. I don't need to bribe. I don't need to give free hand jobs or blow jobs or demolition masks or anything that anybody wants to give. You know what I give? No fucks. I'm bringing this home, kids. Co-host of the year. Two-time, two-time co-host of the year. That's how I get it in. That's how I get down. Bo F. Diggity. The F is for forward. 
forward. Wow. <laughs> Bo Diggity is amazing on the microphone. Like, if he is not, like, a man, becomes a wrestling manager, I don't know, like, what the wrestling world, at, you know, is going to be like. <laughs> the chat room, uh, uh, Mando Ortiz in the chat room says the fuck bag is empty. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, and we do got another one from, again, dominating all the media is Mad Mike. And it's actually kind of a minute. If it plays. Kind of a minute? It's kind of a minute. His, well, his main. Phil, 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 Fred, Fred, Phil, Phil, Bob, Phil, Phil, Bob, Phil, Bob, Phil, 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 PC. He'll be honest, Robert Series team. With Chachi, Sorg, himself, Lucky Tassard, LB, and, uh, well, uh, Chachi, you don't have to worry. You, Sorg, all the guys, go grab both of you and go get a beer. Hot Wheels. First of all, I'm popping your tires. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> pulling that chair out front of you. Thirdly, I'm throwing that fucking pop his head. He'll watch him fall over like a weevil wobble and laugh in his face. Then Riz is going to run away scared with his pants full of piss. And Russell Pan, saving you to last. He's going to find out Grandma Zool. He's going to rip his mask off, expose him for being a thief with Arquette, and he'll run away screaming to Courtney Cox. And then Russell Pan, he'll be doing me one on one. And a little bitch. I'm gonna shove you back up your mother's vagina. <laughs> Why are you like whispering? Because he's at work in his bunny suit. Maybe, yeah, but so, notice that he get, he went through the list of people that he was gonna take. Yes, he mentioned Weeble Wobbles. He forgot <laughs> Bobby F. J. Town, okay? You do not underestimate Bobby F. J. Town, okay? He is our dark horse. Is he's he, our ringer. Is, he, is Bobby Bobby F. J. Town? He's a very secret ninja type fellow. He's nimble. Bobby brings Bobby the F. flood. <laughs> <laughs> As Bobby says in the chat room, Weeble Wobbles don't fall, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wow. like I said in the chat room last week, um, WrestleFan, I'm walking out. I don't care. That's fine. I'll find Wade Barrett or something. I'll figure this shit out. I don't care. I mean, wait, why am I sure. wait? Why am I picking the members? Isn't Russell it fan Grand gives Azul's no team? fucks. <laughs> well, I know it was El Gran Azul who did pick the members or Big PPC. I'm not sure, but god damn, I have to be on Russell Fan's team. Huh. Mm, this is the B team. This, we figure out what, what the what the oh! is. Yeah, what's up? Um, okay. A team brings the fire. Is the B It'll stand for Bobby? Simple. We just tap you on the chest. A quick tap on the chest. You lay Take right down. Doom. Mm-hmm. One, two, three. It's over. Mm-hmm. Simple, okay. easy peasy. I love. Uh, should, should we be discussing this on live? So, so, you're, looking so, to, so, you're, looking to, you're looking to pay somebody off. Mando Ortiz. Uh, somebody stole Russell fans. Fucks Mexico life. <laughs> There you go. Russell from Texas Anarchy. Russell fan equals Vincent. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't know if I'm okay with that. Anyways, uh, let's go to the, 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 the our favorite, the most multimedia of emails that we get every week. Uh, uh, Papa Lunchbox, are you ready for Papa? I'm sorry. Uh, Papa, I'm sorry. Is a McDonald's big song. big PPC? I'm sorry. I'm yes, a, it is. I mixed up my you, my guys. Hold on, you're let me get me. your music on. Yeah, I'm ready. I don't really have. Ready. Are you ready? Uh, hold on, I gotta prepare the music. We have to do this a different way this week. I'm one. ready. Bill, Bill, Bill. No, 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 no. Bill, go ahead. Bill, 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 <laughs> it's the longest reigning emailer to Mayhem Show. It's me. It's me. It's Big PPC. I think those claims are false. I think so too. Uh, Lawler came back on Raw. Great to see Lawler back. Punk and Heyman did great job whether you thought it was good or not. 
I think that Lawler should have returned at WrestleMania, not yet. So having Punk seeing this acting like Heyman had fake heart attack and telling Lawler that he didn't leave the ring and Punk said he would would have beat Lawler to death. That was a sentence. <laughs> it was a bad guy. Does he did... It was bad guy does and he did why he was supposed to do. I'd like to read that again without the accent. It was a bad guy does and he did why he was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sentence. And hey, this is why we started the accent. <clears throat> he got people to talk about it and react from it. Uh, mission accomplished. Get over it, fucking surprise horse lady. Shout out to the Riz. Punk is one of my heroes. Him and his genius. Ryback decimated poor Brad Maddox. It was a five-minute match. Two men of Brad running and three men of brutality. Balls in Maddox's mouth. <laughs> Maybe he will do something again at some point. New call in delay. Eh, wrestle fan. Ryback has been fed. I think dude chat himself. Hashtag good he had dark pants on. <laughs> That's a one it's... very long hashtag. <laughs> a he is a good guy. I can get behind this and no gay thoughts, please. Miz as the hero of Team Foley. Why not Foley just made the Christmas is miserable or whatever, so it all makes sense for once. And it could be awesome. <laughs> Seamus and David Utanga, a, a Clarence Mason on steroids with a drop of intelligence. Bro kicked the shit out of him. What? If it's not the great white, then it ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, wait. If it's not the great white, then it ain't right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Kerwin White reference. Bam. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Shit. If you don't know Kerwin White, look it up. We don't. We don't talk about Kerwin we don't, White. We don't talk about Kerwin White on this episode, <laughs> on this show. DNA pay per view. Quick thoughts: pass or fail? Hey, Hardy wins main event, but good match still a fail. Aries is the man. Devon versus Angle. Good match, I guess. Angle wins. Pass. Daniels and versus Chavo and Hernandez. Great match. Pass. Mexicans win. Samoa Joe versus Magnus Joe wins. Match. Pass. Uh, Gallows or DLC versus Joseph Park, a.k.a. you know, Abyss. Uh, just happy to see Gallows on TV. Pass. Storm versus Rude versus Styles and Storm beats AJ and now, wow, AJ get no title to Bound for Glory next year. I am calling AJ wins Bound for Glory tournament to face champ next year. Happy for Storm. Pass. Eric Young and ODB versus Terra and old boy, who cares, but Eric Young is funny and both girls are good in ring. Old boy from brother and another mother can fuck off. Fail. Joey Ryan versus RVD, good match, but kind of weird match. Pass. TNA gets slightly passing grade because Jeff Hardy win is pointless. Can't wait until we have real champ again. Maybe cowboy? No. Time will tell. Till next time, it's me, it's me, it's Big PPC, Survivor Series match, WMS Team, PPC, LB, Chachi, Zorg, and me. Questions. If you could make a independent group of wrestlers and make them a invading group, who would it be? What's their name? Who is leader in such? Jericho, Cabana, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Generico, Cabana, Kevin Steen, and Mr. 1859 Cliff Compton and they will be the Midwest Card Mafia. Even though they even though a few are from elsewhere, I don't know, but it could be fun. Think who you would want. Thanks at the big PPC. Alright, I know he had some other questions on there, but let's tackle this. So he wants we were supposed to pick independent wrestlers. Put them in a stable. Invade, to form a stable. That invades WWE. Chikara. <laughs> Their name is Chikara. <laughs> give me, uh, give me, give me uh, three of the ants. Um, th- throw Cole Cabana uh, in there. Uh, I'll take uh, three ants. Oh, there's, uh, there's at least three fry. of the ants. <laughs> uh, Mike Quackenbush, Cole Cabana, uh, perhaps as his uh, Mac Classic character. And oh wait, who's that? 
it's whoever it might be. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's kind of an idea. I think it'd be interesting, and I think it would uh, uh, lean more towards what WWE would want to do. So, <laughs> yes, Mr. Baseball. There you go. As Bobby puts in the chat. There you go. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is kind of I, this is kind of a throw me for a loop here. Um, I'm cooking something up. The Briscoes. Okay. Uh, Gorian Facade. Mm-hmm. And as, as flipping ain't easy. No. No, just Gorian Facade just, as they are now. Just Gorian okay. Facade as they are now. Okay. And uh, Cabana. Cabana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what? Was any name or anything to them? No. 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 Just like just, just, I just want them to do something. That, that, uh, I can't come up with a name with it because it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> the whole concept, yeah. Oh, you got, you got that yet, Lunchbox? Uh, I've got three. How many are you supposed to pick? Five? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if there was hey, I don't think, I don't think there's an exact yeah. number. Yeah, you can just pick whatever. I just just uh, I've got I've got Gory, I've got Facade, I've got Ray Row. Um uh basically what I'm cooking up is a team called Friends of the Show. <laughs> <laughs> Friends of the show who are also wrestlers that I would actually be interested in seeing. So um, uh, let's say those three and uh, other wrestlers we've interviewed. There you go. David, is David Ardemira a part of this? David Ardemira. Put that motherfucker on the team. Absolutely. Davari. Uh, uh, so Davari. Was that? All, how, how, about, how about Davari and then all managed by Armando Estrada? And that's yeah, that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and let's, is let's, Cheeky let's, Money still doing anything? Because we interviewed him that one time. <laughs> Gee, well, yeah, I think he's editing DVDs or something like that. <laughs> like, last time he escorted to the ring by um, uh, any of the women we've interviewed. <laughs> Sarah Del Rey. Why not? The, the two we've interviewed. We, 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 <laughs> did, uh, Sarah did, Del Rey. Did we ever interview Daisy Hayes? No, we never talked. Yeah. I tried. I, I tried to get her lined up, but I, I never I got that. I did. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, Sarah Del Rey, Rachel Summerlin. I, I don't think we talked to any other girls, have we? I we don't talk to girls. girls. We, don't we don't like girls. Typical. We don't, we don't talk, talk to girls on this show. Wrestle um, um, fan just points to girls. <laughs> Mand Ortiz said... <laughs> don't talk about that. Mand Ortiz <laughs> said uh, Sabu and three clones, Team Botchamania. There you go. Somebody's saying Jerry Lynn, Ian Rotten. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, Jerry, see, Frank Ian Rotten. Sorry, you, have, you have Sabu, mm-hmm. Babu, <laughs> Mamu, Babu, Fa- and, we'll and Fabu. Fabu? <laughs> it's, the, it's the feminine one. Yeah. <laughs> you always have that one. Yeah. Russell Van, I know you know a lot of indies. Uh, yeah, uh, I since and I, I since I guess I'm a bit impartial since I get to see him every month. Uh, I want the submission squad to invade, but it has to be the Chikara submission squad. Uh, okay. For those that have not seen it, the fact that they aren't working for every promotion ever doesn't make sense to me. So that that's my pick. Okay, what about you there, Riz? Um, I like to see the colony. Colony, just the That'd colony, be a good one. invade either TNA or WWE. Why not? Soldier Ant, Fire Ant, uh, the other one. <laughs> the, the one green, that's green. green ant. The, the there green you go. Ant, one that, the green Racist one. Racist Ant. Uh, and, there, and there's the black ant. <laughs> the Mr. Football Ant. <laughs> uh, player One and Player Two Ant. <laughs> Quack and Bush Ant. Cabana Ant. Can we throw that Halloween Ant in? Cabana Ant. Oh, that's, that, there's Cabana actually a, a wrestler called Halloween. Oh. Steen I Ant. That's, that, I think you saw him once, Can right? Can we turn him into an ant? Sure, why Generic not? Generic Ant. Why not? Uh, Muns, did you have something? I saw waving. No, he didn't. I, no, he didn't. Uh, you did. Mad Mike uh, responded okay. to the email. Yes. It said, uh, I always said Punk should have led Brian Antonio Black Ambrose in the Kings of Wrestling and called themselves the Honor Squad. Mm. Which I did point out to him, Dean Ambrose was never in Ring of Honor, but I see where he's going with it. <laughs> uh, Russell fan, note, note the chat room for your indie minute here in a second, okay? Uh, okay, sure. All right, we'll Matt, get to that. Mike heard you say that, and he's shouting at his iPod. He's oh, I bet, oh, I bet he is. Yeah, I bet he, <laughs> he had a mute because he was at work, so I'm not he sure. He's got you for being knowledgeable about fetus. things. And then um, fetus, fetus, fetus. We had one more question here from Big PPC. Uh, you want to hit that up real quick, Alby? Oh, oh, where did it go? Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm, I scrolled away. It, or we can have somebody Jesus else Christ. try. I can try. No, I've got it. I've got it here. Which? Where was it? Wait, which, what was the other question? 
It's the uh, same question. Uh, if you could make an in- oh wait oh okay you same did them together. Question. I'm sorry I didn't realize you did that all together in one thing. Never mind then. And then and then we got my thing. Semi- all right, hey, yeah, that's yeah. all the email, right? Yes. All right, that's all email. So let's drop over to the man, the wrestle fan. This man right here. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for this week in indie wrestling. Pointing uh, at stuff. <laughs> Are you doing cocaine? Oh, I bet you, yeah, because uh, great way to start, because Combat in Clearfield was this past weekend. It was. Uh, for IWC, Sorgatron Media was in attendance, so Chachi better wake up and tell me what it was about. I'm, I'm awake. All he knows is that Bobby Fish gave him fuck me eyes, and he yes. almost died during the Battle Royal. Yes, correct. And I called it. Did I not call it that Serafini would be in the Battle Royal? You did. Was yes. she really? Yes, she, she was. was. Wow. And she eliminated Corey Futuristic. Yes. Immediately. And got kicked in the face. Yes. By John McChesney. Yes. Aww. And then the doctor came out. Chachi, what were your highlights, your non-professional highlights of the night? Non-professional highlights. Yeah, not that other stuff we're talking about on um, Anything Dalton Castle does. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he, got, he teamed up with your buddy. Yeah, he did. He, he, he teamed up with Keith Hot. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Um, oh, I just I I uh, I was watching the uh, No Excuses uh, DVD and I just saw uh, Keith Hot's man. <laughs> yeah, there's something I got to post with Keith Hot. He's gonna... amazing. He is a quick little guy. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, of... he is. I forget if I was talking to you or somebody. I think JP brought this up uh, that he kind of reminds him of like the uh, Blue Meanie. <laughs> he does the way he's kind of go out there and dancing and stuff. So he could be the next Blue Meanie. And I think it really works. I got a chance to talk to him. He's a really, really gracious individual. So, so uh, he was real cool to talk to for a minute there. Uh, so, what? <laughs> Texas Anarchy in the chat room said, "I got a light tube kicked at my crotch by Masada. Was er, by Masada. My dick totally no sold it. It didn't break. <laughs> <laughs> you do not no sell a light tube from any part of your body from Masada. Okay. Oh, it, yeah. just, it was a no sell." <laughs> so um, other other highlights. It was cool to see Colin Delaney uh, uh, back and and do, looking good, do, doing doing well. You know, uh, he he had a match with Dennis Gregory. Uh, you were talking a little, a little bit about Dennis Gregory in the uh, pre-show there, Chach. Uh, but I don't you don't you I don't think you remembered who he was, right? No, I still don't. I don't think you were watching wrestling in that era yeah, when Colin Delaney was on TV. Still don't know. Really, you weren't? No, no. still don't know. No, but but it was cool to see him there, of course. And uh, uh, oh crap, just uh, Andrew Palace and uh, and uh, Gregory Iron right. was a decent match. Andrew Palace is really kind of impressing. Um, found out today one of the kids in my class. Yeah, I guess Andrew Palace goes to his band's shows. So <laughs> so that was an interesting connection that happened today. Huh. Um, so. Um, yeah, no, but it was it was a good show. It was definitely not like any kind of barn burner of a show. It was uh, it was a fun show. It was a great show for Clearfield. Uh, There's a fun battle royal, great match. Uh, of course, Bobby Fish, uh, who is uh, now a member of the Ring of Honor uh, roster. I understand. Yes, um, he is. We might have seen at the tapings last week, <laughs> months. Uh, he, he had a, he had a good match with uh, Logan Shulo. That guy is over the top. You can I. Pretty sure you can hear everything on the DVD that he yells in the ring. Yes. Uh, for one thing, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't, and I didn't use your ringside camera. Um, so <laughs> uh, he's a trip. They were like going on and yelling for like five minutes after the show ended. Yeah. So it, nice. it, it was always a good, always a good time. So go over <laughs> so, uh, iwcwrestling dot com. They'll have the, we'll have the DVD up there uh, shortly for uh, ordering. Pre orders will be going out here sometime this week. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, and Colin Delaney gets a tag title shot yes. with a mystery partner in the next show. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he gets to face the uh, founding fathers. Uh, so yeah, the next one, and we'll talk about this a little bit in advance. Logan Shiloh versus Facade, title versus title, thirty man Iron Match. Can't wait for that, Chach. 30, 30, oh, 30 minute Iron Man match. <laughs> no, that's the show you're not doing. Oh. That's so <laughs> She's like, thank God. No, I want to watch that match. I don't want to film it. I just want to watch it. Oh, then you get your wish because you'll be able to watch it afterwards. Oh, man. Awesome. Why do I not get to do the good show? I'm sorry. <laughs> you sent me to Clearfield, but no, I can't do winner takes all. Hey, boss. Fuck you. <laughs> you can't really see the finger on the camera. I know. It was no, the I have to go watch. It, it was the, no, it was never the mind. I, number, it was the pointer finger. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. What else is going on now? Well, actually, while he's here, uh, we, we talked a little bit here uh, without you here, Buns, last week. Uh, you attended the, the, the Ring of Honor TV taping uh, with me a couple weeks Super ago. Super awesome. So I wanted to get your take on, take on it for a couple minutes here. Again, it, it, it's not aired. They're still doing... Next road, week. Next it's week. next or, week. Yeah. They're still doing... What is it? Road Rage? Well, yeah, they were finishing up Road Rage, and then they said at the end of the, this uh, this week's show that Josh. it will be <laughs> Sunday. We see oh, you leaving this time because we're talking to months. <laughs> No, but it, it's it's going to be super cool. I mean, I got to see it firsthand, and it, I wonder if they'll actually catch us on TV from some of our antics for as close as we were because there you go. we were super loud, super obnoxious, <laughs> super interactive. I mean, it was awesome, so fun. And then now you now we we've had this discussion because again, you and Sean Graham, not like you know, you're not watching a lot of wrestling or anything. I'm not a like conventional that. out of the closet wrestling fan yet. No, no, that's why it really kind of surprised me when we were talking at a bar at one time, and your guys are like, "Oh, you, you seen the Ring of Honor?" I'm like, "You guys are watching this." Yes. What, the, let me. I want to know why you're watching this. Why are you watching this? And, and and what carried over your impressions going to the live show? Well, I mean, I back in the day, I was a wrestling fan as a kid. You know, everyone had the big rubber wrestlers you play with, Hulk Hogan, Iron Sheik, Rowdy Roddy Piper. I come from the generation where you had the great cartoon. I mean, the old wrestling mm-hmm. cartoons were awesome. And it kind of lost track of it, you know, just not as not as fun as it used to be. Too, too much glam, I thought. You know, things are too staged. And one night I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I watch this Ring of Honor. It had a kind of like a Blair Witch feel to it. Kind of, <laughs> Wait, kind what? Of, a Blair Witch feel. I mean, it was like real, real analog. There wasn't a lot of digital to it. You know, you felt like it was kind of a bunch of guys videotaping something. There, was, there wasn't a bunch of like pyro and, yeah. and video screens and, and backstage segments or anything. But it was a step above the crazy hillbillies doing backflips off their roof onto their, you know, family picnic table and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Somewhere in between that that mix, I really started to fall in love with how great they were trying, the product they were putting out. And then, you know, when we talked about going, it took it to a whole nother level. I mean, mm. I, I, I mentioned the fact that it, it's kind of like, for me, almost re, re-believing in Santa Claus again. Like, there's this whole – I was so sucked in. I was so sucked in. I mean, every ooh and ah, uh, it was just it was a great experience. And I think a lot of that comes from – it's interactive. I mean, you have – kind of like a, a say as to what goes on you can hear the chants and you know it's not real rigid and conformed it's still kind of rough and it's still kind of cool so hopefully they can maintain that as they grow because they are going to grow in popularity and then these guys have been around for a while like lb here he's been a big proponent of them back when like these guys were basically just on dvd and, sh- and doing yep. shows around. only only on dvd and um like you, that's the only you could either either see them on DVD, or you could see them uh, in a little high school gym, and that was it. Yeah, that's basically it. Like like I went first went that that's program you see over here from is from two thousand nine I think, yeah two thousand eight at the. Uh, that's awesome. August. Wait, this isn't the right show. This is really I thought I went in January. I'm very confused now. No, this is August first, two thousand eight, when I went. And you notice there's a lot of faces on here that are now in WWE <laughs> or TNA. So that goes to show uh, kind of what's going on there. Um, hey, there's my, Nigel McGinnis back when he had the awesome uh, spiky hair too. And now he wears a suit and calls the shots. Yeah, that's right. Which spoilers? They haven't seen that yet. He wears a suit. How's well, that? look at the suit isn't. Oh, that damn. And he calls it from the he calls it from the side of the stage. What do you say to that? There you go. There you go. Um, but uh, but yeah, this isn't your first wrestling live experience. It was it was my first, and I'll say this: it was my first organized to that degree, and that's pretty sad to say because okay. I have been to the school gyms, to the back of people's backyards where their cousin was doing a concert. Then the other cousins put together a plywood ring, and and you know that's where I guess. I, I really started to like it again because you still you see the pain and I love the pain. I mean the, the sound of somebody smashing off the mat mm-hmm. went the, just awesome. I mean it was so intense to just be right there. Mm-hmm. There you go. And you see, I mean this is a big kind of cavernous place. I got some pictures up here if you're on video, and they really just kind of set up on the one end of it. Um, and and in this picture here is basically the our view. You know. Uh, we're in the front row of the general admission, and uh, like I said, I, if the camera's the right way. You're probably going to see uh, Munz and Sean right in the front page or front front row. Yeah, I'm not small, so no, you will no, see no. me. And you'll definitely hear uh, uh, Charlie Haas yelling back at him. 
Oh yeah, we we he- the heckling is. I do it at pirate games. Let alone uh, I would hold back from doing it at this event where I'm that intimate with people. I got a lot to say, and I'm not a small kid. And you did have a helper. Yeah, I'd like to see. There's the cup megaphone. <laughs> I, I'm not patenting yet, but I'm saying at every sporting event, get the cup megaphone, bust out the bottom of a cup, and it amplifies it by like enough that they'll hear you. I mean, we've been told it at, at baseball games that we know that those players can hear us. And like you said, Haas definitely yelled something about my mom back at me. I, and I don't know if it's really kind of made the rumor mill, but it looked like there's a member of Aces and Eights in the background. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. Just this guy standing there, all like decked out in this mask. I was just like, "What's going on here?" He wasn't this young was either. No, no, he was not. But it was a good time uh, either way. And there's a uh, oh, what's the shirt? I think you, I think you guys really dug the shirt here that uh, Kevin Steen was. Oh, is that the? Um, oh, what was it? It was the lady wrestler. Oh yeah, the women uh, what, of honor. What? No, no, no. It said. Oh, it said lady wrestler. Uh, it says, I remember seeing a I think it says, photo. I'm a lady on the front and on the back, wrestler. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Kevin, so, yeah. Ring Talk, of, the, the lady wrestling, I mean, I got to say, that was super awesome. Uh, Mischief versus, I don't know who the other girl wow. was. Wow. Allison K, I believe. Wow. I mean, I am so How sold. How do you know this? Wrestle fan. Come here, get out. Whoa, you broke it. Wow. He got so angry. So excited. He so hard he broke his team. Wrestling Mayhem Show fans are welcome. Wow. Uh, But no, tremendous night. Yeah. Got to go back, right? I want to see the Women of Honor. I found out there's a whole separate, like, under circuit of Women of Honor, it's Mm -hmm. called. Well, uh, well, there's there's a DVD. Yeah, I want want it. Well, what that. Yeah, they they just released the uh, best of sort of the Women of Honor matches. Stalking stuff for idea, guys. Help me out. I want it. Well, yeah, you don't know. There's there's actually a whole fed. It's it's a sister promotion of Ring of Honor called Shimmer. I love it. I used to love Glow. Glow was what kept me in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you maybe got something to come back to. There's a whole line of DVDs for that if you want to look it up. Oh, oh yeah, it's, definitely. It's, it's pretty incredible. But it's got it's got girls like that mischief, like Awesome Kong, like like uh, Sarah Del Rey that's been on the show. I love seeing um, that. So it, awesome. It's yeah, all girls. They're so easy on the awesome. eyes too. The oh, positions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good wrestling and it's good wrestling just like you saw so uh favorite match of the night favorite match of the night had to be the uh what was it, the steel city street fight ridiculous with the briscoe briscoe and uh and carino everything that, that consumed that match was so effing awesome i mean the antics before during and after mm-hmm. so awesome I mean, like you said, you mentioned the wheelbarrow of chairs. Yeah. Where would you ever see a wheelbarrow of chairs? Who thinks of that? Like, I'm going to bring <laughs> not one chair, not two chairs, but a wheelbarrow full to hit you. And then, like you said, he brought down the set. Nobody was ready for that. That's like the pureness of it. Like, he was really pissed about that. <laughs> he wanted to get that thing out there. He tried to rip the set down. It was great. It was great. And of course, scary moment there. We talked a bit uh, at length with uh, Carino in that, that He's movie. He's such a vagina. End. He should just shake it off. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's just a little steal to the head. <laughs> it's a little steal awesome. to the head. On that note, thanks. Hey, thanks for thanks for coming by and and and, and let us know what your thoughts on that. Thanks for having me, like, guys. I'm excited because I, I mean, this more. is this is one I, like I want to like we're like oh I don't know about Ring of Honor on the show because someone's kind of checking but like I don't know what they're doing with that. This is this is the people they're look, they're looking at here is guys like this guy that are just stumbling in maybe kind of. Miss their old rock and wrestling, and uh, and and there you go. So uh, so there you go. I, yeah, and I'm really growing up because you have given it a second chance. I really like what they've been doing in the last few weeks. It can only get so, better. It can only get better. I mean, it's a little weird that they do these road rage things, and it's part of the eye pay per view and, and that. So I think I kind of like that though because it spreads it out sort of a bit more, and you that's get true. a you know a better taste of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and at least like they know like not everybody, not a lot of people are getting these eye pay per views. Let's spread it over the show, and maybe get people to buy the DVD. So, so I mean mm-hmm. that's good. I mean let's see, and a little bit of like here's what you're missing. 
You know, I mean, we got to see the TV title match with uh, Cole and ah crap, Eddie Edwards. Yeah, uh, for this past weekend, um, that's that's awesome. So you're actually getting a lot of good wrestling, good content, and the matches coming up from Pittsburgh are going to be tremendous. And I'm hearing good, like even Bobby Fish was saying at, at the Clearfield show that it really does sound like they're going to come back to Pittsburgh for another set of tapes. They could maybe try coming a little closer to Pittsburgh. Well, that's maybe a problem. Actually, in Pittsburgh, and we talked about this <laughs> at length before. I don't know why wrestling doesn't happen in. Pittsburgh. All their shows are all down there. Something about Bruno San Martino probably. Like the, there's one in McKeesport, PWX. There's uh, Elizabeth for IWC, West Newton for IWA, and these and if anything big, TNA, Ring of Honor, they're all down there at the Ross River Ice Car. There's nothing there's nothing in the actual city. Exactly. exactly. It's well, because there's nothing in the actual mailing address of Pittsburgh. Well, there, there is. There's KSWA, but they're kind of small potatoes. They, they, they do uh, they, uh, the, the moose or something. Right. Uh, the yeah. space that That's these things, small. the space that these things need, isn't available. Yeah, or too expensive. So I mean, there's there's a lot of things. I mean, the closest I've seen was uh, well, Death Wrestle Fest has their thing. I forget where it's at. Churchill. Is in Churchill. It's in, it's in the School for the Deaf in Churchill, PA. It's still yeah. in the vicinity, but again, that's like it's School for the Deaf, so that makes sense. Um, but also, uh, the Carnegie, where the Carnegie Music Hall is over there in Homestead, they had the other side. They set up for wrestling when they did a uh, memorial show for Devil Budokan. Any ice skating rink, like we were in for for the one we went to, could be used for it. I don't understand why they don't use the ice castle out here in Mount Lebanon. Any of them could. Or Castle Shannon. There's the Mount Lebanon Hockey Arena. I mean, mm-hmm. there's tons of places they could do it if they really want. Green Tree Sportsplex. That's indoors. It's right in Green Tree. Mm-hmm. But they mm-hmm. could do it if they wanted to. There's got to be a reason. Yeah. And that's it, the guy, you know, so the one of the promoters is right here in Scott Township. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not like he's not familiar with the area. So I want to be like, hey, why don't you go talk to these guys? I'd love to not drive a mile away. Hey, squeaky get wheels get oiled. Again. You have to do that stuff to yeah. get it going. Yeah. So some thoughts. You so. know, back in the day, they used to run um, run at the garden uh, over <laughs> here on the north side before. Sorry, I have a cat on me and I can't get close to the computer. You have a cat? Is there um, another name for that they used to They used to run the, the garden, which is uh, so then lovely. became a porn theater mm-hmm. uh, here on the north side. But it Recently, uh, it's closed, and somebody bought that whole block. I don't remember who it was, um, but I mean, it would be awesome if they renovated the garden, opened it back up, and started running shows out of there. Well, you said if, the garden. Ha- the idea awesome. of having wrestling and stand-up comedy like five blocks from me is a wonderful, life, wonderful. And porn. Time. Oh yeah, and porn. And porn. <laughs> I, I've got porn right in front of me. I'm watching porn as I'm doing the show. That's all right, and it's taken care of. I don't need to share that uh, with uh, another using group the, of sweaty men. I see he's using Internet Explorer on the Xbox. Uh-huh. That's exactly right. That's and exactly since right. We're still talking, PlayStation. Since we're still talking Pittsburgh, we can make a quick mention. Thanks to uh, – I think Juggalo John had this in the chat room and reminded me. Uh, Extreme Rising coming through Pittsburgh. I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm going. I mean, I kind of wanted to go because it's got like Jerry Lynn and his last match is going to be at the Ring of Honor I pay per view this week or this next month. Oh, his last match? It's, they they're annou- they announced it as his last match at the TV. Well, table. that's not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's wrestling for uh, ACW in January. Oh, that's, no. That's, not his, that's not his, <laughs> probably his last match at Ring of Honor. He's Terry Funk. Oh, no, man. well, no, 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 because he's retiring. He's retiring after that. No, he's, he's Terry Funking it. I think he said, uh, like, he was wrestling February in Minneapolis in his oh, hometown. this is getting and that, longer. And that's going to be his last match. This is getting longer. <laughs> his last match will be next year. But, yeah, so, I mean, we have, we have a, Brett Favre you know, lots, it's up there in Manaka, PA, again, a lot outside, pretty far outside of Pittsburgh. But this is where they always used to have ECW. Back, like this is, I think, where they had like one of the November uh, to Remembers or something like that. Uh, so we, we've got some interesting matches. We got Matt Hardy versus Shane Douglas. <sighs> Uh, mm. <laughs> Jerry Lynn Homicide, uh, FBI versus Blackout, Sabu and uh, Devin Storm. Isn't that Crowbar? Yes, indeed. Wow, he looks interesting. Luke Hawk and Perry Saturn. Uh, best. Bestia versus Facade. So, friend of the show, Facade's going to be on the show. Stevie Richards versus Papa Don. Who? Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It, 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 you know, they got guys like New Jack, uh, you know, and, and, 
and so, and a bunch of other people on the on the on the flyer for it. I, I don't know. It's twenty bucks for general admission. After seeing a show like we did, <laughs> well, that was Honor, a hell of a twenty bucks we got. Uh, yeah, that was a hell of twenty bucks we got. Like five, five, five. It was they they did like I think five episodes. Five. That was, that uh, was five we, hours. It took us crazy. Um, and uh, I just don't see the value in it with this. Like, I'm not somebody that's crazy about, yeah, I get to see Shane Douglas. Yeah, I get to see Jerry Law, uh, Jerry Lynn. I'd like to see – Jerry Lynn is really the high point of this. But you'll pay 40 to go to WWE. No, yeah. we pay 20 to go to WWE. Yeah, but that WWE show is a super show. So it's going to be like the equivalent – like that's a week worth of wrestling. I, I heard and I'm that's, scared. You, <laughs> <laughs> I heard and I'm scared because I'm going with you guys to that, and that scared me too. Because it's gonna be SmackDown and Raw and Superstars and yes. Saturday Slam and main event, and I don't know if there's another show they've added on since. Thank God they'll serve alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Probably up until Saturday Slam, so everybody's sober. Um, <laughs> mm. So I, I don't know. It's it's here. It's coming. I was considering contacting about doing a vendor thing, but I just can't see. I I, I don't know. If you're if you're a fan of the old ECW, want to see these guys, go for it. Um, I I just find Matt Hardy obnoxious anymore. Even his Ring of Honor stuff that's popping yep. up. He just oh, really, <laughs> don't get me started on that. Just seems obnoxious. Simmer down now. Simmer down. Mm. Mm. Wrestle fan, what's going on? that's not in Pittsburgh. We've kind of been long in the tooth with this. <laughs> the, the revolution. <laughs> uh, What's that? The Revolution says you have Homicide, Papa Don, Hardy, and Lynn is your high spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as far no, no, as no, 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 don't, don't discredit Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn honestly is an amazing performer. Apparently, when they had their first uh, EC uh, Extreme reunion show, or whatever, which that whole show was really horrible. Uh, Jerry Lynn's match with Crowbar like stole the show. Let me clarify that. I, the reason Lynn is the highlight, because this could be the last time I get to see him in person wrestle. Exactly. That was and my it, that was my hook. I, I, I should have clarified that a bit more. Um, and, I mean, you know. But he's also a phenomenal wrestler. I, I've He's been doing a tour, uh, like a retirement tour of ACW, and yeah. he's a phenomenal wrestler still, you know. Yeah, I mean, last I saw, Saturn looks like shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> With his face tattoo, uh, Sabu. I'm kind of tired of he- seeing him hurt himself. Uh, fuck Matt Hardy, uh, <laughs> Douglas. Fuck uh, well, Douglas, I can see pop up randomly in RWA. Have <laughs> probably will again. Uh, I don't know who Pompadon is. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm probably out. He's a he's a younger person. wrestler. Um, he's yeah. he's he's very he's fairly good. And it's I cool that it's not those. like here's a bunch of old guys from 15 years ago that are completely broken. Here's like facade. Here's whoever this Pompadon guy oh, is. Oh, you know, I, I Luke Hawk. Luke Hawk. He sounds familiar. He's he's one of those fairly familiar. Guys. Yeah. He was on that fucking MTV piece of shit thing. He was on WSX, yeah. Okay, so I mean, yeah. we got we got a like lot said, going that on MTV there. MTV piece of shit. So, so I mean, it, it's cool that they're mixing that up. So we know we're going to see some good matches go on here. Yeah. So it's all it all depends on how much you want that nostalgia, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which but they're trying ECW, to build so ECW, ECW is nostalgia has sort of been sold for repeatedly. Any and reunion show ECW does. Mm-hmm. They still want to get those people yeah. and get that those people that 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 they're making fan. Money. They're making money off of nostalgia. That's what WWE does. Money. So and that's what it's like. Hey, we're kind yeah. of an ECW reunion show. But WWE but, does it better. Yeah, all, all around, all around. But this is kind of yeah. down and dirty, just like ECW was. Um, and then also, if you're in the Philly area or able to get to the Philly area, they are doing like a big double main event show Saturday, December 29th. Uh, first ever world title match, Gangsters versus Blackout in a cage is one mm-hmm. listed That's there. That's a good idea. So, cages. so go check that out. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Hijo de Rey Mysterio. De Son Pass? of Rey Mysterio. Oh, what's that? Son of Rey Mysterio. Thank you. Thank you for the translation. So now we have another I think, I think but isn't Rey Mysterio's son like 12? The heir to hey, the this Mysterio. Is, this is actually Rey Mysterio's brother. Oh, so they just have the Spanish wrong. <laughs> so here, here it is. Hey, <laughs> no, 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 it's it's, 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 it's not Ray Mysterio. Yeah, it's Ray Mysterio Senior. Mm-hmm. They're referencing Ray Mysterio Senior. But Ray Mysterio Senior was his uncle. Yeah. No, Ray. Ray. That's our, our current Ray Mysterio. Yeah. So I was wrong about the brother thing. Sorry. Mexican wrestlers have great masks. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, right so it, it's cousin 
<laughs> third, oh, it's the cousin third cousin the once removed of Rey no, Mysterio. No, it, it's the cousin of current Rey Mysterio then, which would make this guy the real son of Rey Mysterio. You right. are the okay. you are the father. Okay. Oh, the chat room pointed that out for me. I'm wow. from I'm from basically Mexico, and I'm confused. Like <laughs> basically Mexico. That, you know, Mexico. The son of Rey Mysterio, as advertised in this thing, is the son of Rey Mysterio WWE Rey Mysterio's uncle. Sweet so baby, which is Mexico. the original Rey Mysterio. Because that's so where it's Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio's brother. No, no, his cousin. WWE, the WWE Rey Mysterio <laughs> got the name and title from his uncle, not his yeah. father. So, because of that, this guy is actually WWE's Rey Mysterio's cousin, because he is the true son oh. of WWE Rey Mysterio's uncle. Bottom wow. line, he's Mexican and he wears a mask. Finkel exactly, a I'm so confused. <laughs> or, no, wait, Einhorn is a man. Finkel? Finkel is Einhorn. Finkel is Einhorn? Einhorn is, is Finkel. Finkel. So more of the Finkel. indie minutes. Indie yeah. minutes. <laughs> that was, yeah, and honestly, that it's was like fun. one of those time travel discussions that make you go cross-eyed. Not really. I, it's bit. rather simple. Yeah, it, it, it did make my brain hurt. It's rather yeah, it's simple. Just, <laughs> Josh, it's you rather just explain it to us again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the beginning and explain it to us again. Okay. The original Rey Mysterio. I was kidding. Please don't the, explain The original. <laughs> the original <laughs> no, no, you're being shut down. No, now. let's talk about more. No, 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 chart for this. no. The original Rey Mysterio. Oh, my God. There it is. I need a chart for this. There we go. We have a whiteboard. We need the whiteboard. The original Rey Mysterio. Is actually WWE Rey Mysterio's uncle. Yes. So yeah, this guy that we they're advertising know. as got, the son of Rey Mysterio is the true son of Rey Mysterio. You are the father. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> I think we got it. Wrestle fan, is it, God, is there anything else going on? Talk about there is absolutely a was lot that a minute on. of indie, or was that a lot longer than a we minute? We get a lot more. Well, it always we're goes on for like an hour. We get to you WWE in the second time hour. We spent like an hour doing the Rey Mysterio family trio. Okay? Bullshit! It was ten minutes. Shut up, Junior. <laughs> so that tells it you how big indie's getting. Too. It's but, more than uh, just indie. Okay, let's, let's let's get back on track here. Okay, so this past weekend uh, down here in Texas was a big weekend for Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Uh, for sure, starting off Sunday in Austin, Texas, was the Lone Star Classic Tournament, the big 12-person tournament they hold every year t- um, to crown the ACW Heavyweight Champion and the Lone Star Classic Champion. What a thing! Point the big- and point. He's got jungle <laughs> we'll, fever. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. The big, Point the big news being that uh, in a surprise entrant into the tournament, friend of the show Rachel Summerlin won the Lone Star Classic. She is the new. Who's got uh, jungle fever? Oh my god. She is the uh, Lone Star Classic champion and the new ACW heavyweight champion. Uh, she is uh, she's only the second uh, Joshi to hold the uh, heavyweight title, uh, followed by Portia Perez last year. Uh, but she is the first Joshi to ever win the Lone Star Classic ch- uh, championship, win the whole tournament. Uh, she was actually a replacement for Jerry Lynn, who uh, got injured in his first round match. Uh, she filled in for him, uh, beating ACH in the semifinal and then Evan Jalistico in the finals in, bo- in both very intense matchups, uh, and she came out with the uh, victory. So I, we want to congratulate uh, friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Rachel Summerlin, uh, for becoming the ACW Heavyweight Champion. Uh, I highly encourage you when the Lone Star Classic comes out on DVD to pick it up. The, top to bottom, the card was amazing. There was, no, not, there was not a single bad match on the card. Uh, it was that good. Uh, and the Lone Star Classic is definitely one of their high – best shows every year so i definitely encourage people to check that out when it comes out and then the next night uh yes uh last night was uh showtime scott summer's birthday bash uh at hooligans in live oak texas uh it was a completely free show uh showtime scott summer's as a gift to uh the fans for his birthday puts on a free show uh every year uh, and it was a phenomenal time. The uh, the main event, Showtime Scott Summers beating Ryan Genesis in a t- uh, two out of three falls matchup, winning two falls out of one. Uh, awesome, awesome matchup. I do want to definitely point out uh, some people that I believe I've mentioned before on the show. One of the 
absolute highlights of the show was the matchup between uh, ACH, who is becoming a fast rising star in the independents. Uh, Started a lot, started mainly in AC by so, and uh, Stevie Vega oh, 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 is going to Is that Matt Roy? Oh my god! 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 This was a free show, you know, and for that, you know, a lot of the wrestlers could have gone a bit easier, but they, they went full force, um, brought everything they had to it. The match ended uh, in a draw because both men could not respond to the 10 count. Uh, it was that intense. Um, and I wanted to just personally take this time of the show to thank them because it was phenomenal stuff um and i posted i mentioned it on my facebook post uh if you are a wrestling promoter this is when you have the opportunity to book ach or davy vega and you pass that opportunity up you're either a moron or you're ignorant because those guys definitely have a bright bright future in professional wrestling do me a favor do me a favor wrestle fan there's a there's a there's a call out for dream matches over on the iwc uh mm -hmm. facebook uh group why don't you drop yes. some AC, ACH stuff on there? Definitely. And, and that's the thing. I they, They're making their ways on the East Coast, both ACH and Vega, and a lot of the other ACW guys. Um, I would definitely yeah, love Jerry. to see them in an IWC and, and get you know, the Pittsburgh you group to sort of get a, bit, uh, shot, get a look at these guys. Because I, I get to see them every month. You think you um, but I want more people to sort of get their eyes on them because so they deserve I'll all the success you, in the world. Jerry. Um, so I definitely encourage people to uh, get that DVD when it comes out. The next event for ACW uh, is going to be December 16th, uh, Delusions of Our Childish Days, in uh, back in Austin, Texas at the Mohawk. Um, already announced is uh, former ACW heavyweight champion Jacus Pliskin is going one-on-one -on -one with the Women's Superstars Uncensored champion Jessica Havoc who is making her return Ooh. to ACW. That's going to be a very intense matchup. And, of course, more of the card is going to be announced uh, as it goes, including more of the card for their big Guilty by Association event in January, the biggest event they hold every year. Uh, if you want more information on them, I encourage you to go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. Go support the local Texas uh, independent wrestling, especially these guys. who are, they're, they're definitely the cream of the crop. They are the best you can find in Texas. Um, and I definitely encourage you to go check them out. Uh, anything anything uh, they have on the internet. Um, and the next thing I want to mention, uh, and which I believe Mad Mike is going to bring up later in his Minute of Mayhem, is that Mad Mike is actually going to be attending uh, the big Chikara event in Manhattan, New York. The, the Cybernetico Rises, um, which is the big... The Cybernetico is one of the biggest events Chikara does every year, which is highlighted by an 8-on-8 eight eight, uh, Torneo Cybernetico, which is a elimination-style match up where um, it's basically paired off in teams, but there can only be one winner. It's a very interesting matchup. The matchup usually goes like an hour long. Those masks are awesome. Yes, uh, it's Team Chikara headed by Eddie Kingston taking on Team Ring of Honor, which is head headed by Kevin Steen. Um, it's it, it's going to be an, an, an awesome show. The lineup looks wow. amazing, and Mad Mike will be there. So if you're going to be at that event, hopefully you can see Mad Mike and tell him what's up, and you know maybe. You know, abuse him a little bit. You know, I'm just throwing that out there. Whoa, um, whoa, 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 wait a minute. With Time physically, out. not not sexually. I'm sorry. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Wrestle fan, you say that you want them to abuse Mad Mike if they see him at a live show. Right. However, I'm, I'm getting the advantage for the Survivor Series match. Come on. However, <laughs> when we say. That if you see Wrestle Fan chop him, mm -hmm. you don't like that. No, I don't. Uh, I don't and, think Mike likes. I, I don't know and who you would. try to persuade but, and, the and fans I, and, and of I'm the sure. Wrestling Mayhem show not to s chop you. Well, no, I, I no choppy choppy Wrestle Fan. I have a solution to this entire thing it's a simple solution if you see mad mike at a show uh don't chop him jerk him off with your mouth 
just take him, take him to your car, don't jerk worry, him off with don't your worry, mouth, you won't get kicked shake out. his you... hand and say, you're doing a really good job, and I like your condom suit. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you have to do. <laughs> don't worry, you won't, you won't get kicked out of the car. Man, show. No, not at all. And, is, if, and if you see Wrestle That's why fan, I said to the car. Oh, it's the car. I got you. It's New York City, so I, I, yeah. it's Chikara. Um, it's Chikara. Fuck it, do it in the ring. Say it's your finisher. <laughs> <laughs> he's, wear, he's wearing a condom suit. They'll think it's part of the show. <laughs> I want to point out here one match. Uh, I don't. I don't think you mentioned this here, Russell fan. I don't know if you're going to one, two, three, kid and Marty Jannetty versus the Heartthrobs. Is he yeah. going to show up this time? Which one, Marty Jannetty? Marty Jannetty. Wow. Janetti has uh, been advertised for a couple Chikara shows. Oh, uh, maybe this time it'll happen. The heartthrobs are still a thing. If they, yeah, they. they well, whoa, they, whoa, stop! Time out. What? All right, <laughs> you just said, are the heartthrobs still a thing? In a match that has the one, two, three, King <laughs> Marty Janetti. The fuck is your problem? Is Marty Janetti still one, a two, thing? Three kid is somewhat relevant. No, <laughs> he's so not. Not as, <laughs> not as the one, two, three kid, but well, yeah, but he's still memorable. <laughs> because he released, to see the he one, released two, a porn. <laughs> porn works though. No one oh, gives a shit. I love porn. Why? Why did you have to bring that up? Ugh. Oh, Russell fan, is there anything else, please? The, now, the now I gotta go thing. throw up. One final thing. Great final end. thing, since, uh, and I guess since we mentioned happened. women's wrestling earlier, and we mentioned Shimmer Wrestling, uh, the sister promotion of Shimmer Shine Wrestling uh, is having their event uh, this coming weekend, November 16th, in Ybor City, Florida, um, at the Orpheum. Awesome place. Uh, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. Either, awesome. uh, either at the show live or on iPay-Per-View at www.live.com. Uh, a lot of great talents uh, have been announced for that event. The main event that was just announced recent, uh, just came together recently. Uh, Mercedes Martinez and uh, uh, Rain teaming up to take on former WWE uh, uh, Women's Champion Jazz. And the announcement today of uh, the pro re- in ring return of Awesome Kong. So awesome that Kong. is going to be good, and I hope Lunchbox. I I, I, I hope Lunchbox Isn't is getting his plane tickets now. <laughs> What's that? Isn't Awesome Kong that big black chick from California? I don't know if she's from California, but yeah. I am not You're... buying plane tickets for this what match. Was she, if, you know what? If Kong wants me there, she can buy the plane tickets for me. She knows where to find <laughs> me. I love Kong. Kong is awesome. And that, like I said, uh, that's going to be her in ring. Uh, her entering the uh, return since uh, leaving WWE, so that's it's it's going to be a really interesting show. A lot of also int- uh, new talents have been announced. Uh, Athena from up here in the oh, Texas sure. area, uh, Eva Lise, who was uh, on WWE Tough Enough, uh, is one of the uh, participants in this event, and a lot of uh, just great women's wrestling talent from uh, all over the world. Uh, so you can go check them out and get more ticket information and the information for the i pay per view at shinewrestling dot com, and that. Is the indie minute for this week? All right. Oh, 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 I have a question. Okay. Since that indie minute was like an hour long. Yes, because of other people. Next week, you don't get one. Uh, oh, you act like it's my fault. It wait, is. wait, wait, wait. I want to point is. out Re- Wrestle Fan got some props for the show over the weekend. Oh, he did. Yes. No, uh, he didn't. Think- what did you say? Especially. Have- <laughs> is there a video of this? No. There's so, no evidence of this no whatsoever. Evidence. Wrestle fan, Except so we have for his now. Now the word is the Facebook word is post. they enjoyed the show, especially your indie minute. That's how that's I know it's fake. fake. That's <clears throat> fake. So your job no, is next time to go to these ma- people. How much did you pay the man, Wrestle nah, fan? There is Get a no testimonial. Money. You got an iPhone or Android device, something with a camera, sir. Get yeah, this on okay, for, oh, video. Hold on, hold on, because uh, yes, I'm going to be like, hey, you said you just said some great stuff about that show. Let me get you on camera saying it. Hey, yes. hey, you know what? We we would like some Promotion. testimonials. We'd like to see you some fan if they, interest. If they listen to the show, they're hearing us asking for proof, <laughs> guys. We want you to find Wrestle Fan, jerk him off with your mouth, <laughs> and then give a testimonial on video saying you love the Wrestling Mayhem show. Plug your Twitter. We'll fucking put it on the show. Plug we'll your put Twitter. the plug on the show. We will not put Seriously, we're the curious. What are you like? And do you like when we go like an hour for the indie the minute? Show. Please, like, drop us an email, drop us a voicemail, do a YouTube video, and send it to us. How about us. not suck my dick? Uh, uh, Mando, Wrestle fan, Mando I am says, you up. 
Mando Come says on. teeth, no gum. Um, gum, no teeth. <laughs> gum, no, he says gum, teeth, no, no teeth, all teeth, no gum. Yeah. Oh, God, no, that's horrible. <laughs> that's where he goes. I, I just want to point out that Lunchbox has a serious obsession with uh, people <laughs> getting jerked off <laughs> via mouth. It's, look, it's a phrase that I heard, and it's awesome, and I, I want to use it as much as possible. <laughs> I want it's it. a phrase that he heard, but he doesn't know he what it means yet. Work. He uses it on exactly the bus. What he it means uses it in the elevator. A job. Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> Jerk them off with your mouth. It's a great turn of phrase. Use it. Tell a friend. Tell I like a friend Texas, to jerk you off with Texas their Arnarchy. mouth. Texas Arnarchy says, how often does WrestleFan say, please don't suck my dick? <laughs> Revolution, <laughs> Revolution <laughs> said he would just like to point out that WrestleFan doesn't want to get his dick sucked. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the guy that came up to me was a male. Wait, somebody I'm came sorry. up to you? <laughs> somebody actually came up to you about this? No, he about thanking me for the show. Called. Did he say came up to you? Or wait, came why on? do we we have gotten into it? Wait, 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 just, wait uh, some not guy going came anywhere. on you? Did he say somebody came on him? Yeah, I think Revolution he's... says so. A mouth is a mouth. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Wrestle <laughs> Fan just said that some guy came on him. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> said. Fan, you All right. Get, on Wrestle that note, I think this is a great point. A great point for us to thank Mike Munns for joining us here on the show. He has to take off here, but we got to talk some indie and some other stuff with him. Ladies, gentlemen, mouth sucker offers. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Had a good time. I'm going to be going to WWE coming up. Hopefully that doesn't completely re-ruin wrestling for me again because <laughs> ROH doesn't come around enough for me to re-love it again. Mm-hmm. But I will be going to see the next ROH match that I can because that was so awesome. Go so awesome. travel to Baltimore. <laughs> I, I, I might. I mean, I've gone to Baltimore before, but I, I'm sure I, I want to piss these guys off. I want to see if I can provoke them. I want one of them to try and attack me, and I want to, <laughs> I want to attack them. I think this could turn into something fun. I mean, I'm 6'2", 260. I think I can hang. All right. All I'm, right. I'm excited there you about go. wrestling. Maybe Mike Bunn's actually involved. starting real fights with wrestlers. There you go. Thank you very much. At Demunz, D-E-M-U-N-Z. Oh, yeah. Go follow him. Talk wrestling with them. Have some fun. See you, Chach. See you, All right. And with that, we're going to go check out what's going on in gold. Thank you for the Indie Minute. A crazy-ass Indie Minute. Thank you, fans. Blowjob is a blowjob. Everybody's got a price. Um, here's a little bit of the what's going on on gold. A little bit of other stuff going on, and we'll be right back. With the remember what? Everyone was doing it this week. Chach, he feels a They learned. Like, uh, uh, Bobby Fish did it. I've only ever filmed him like one other time. Their particular photo pose. Mine is uh, my face is trying to reach the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Russell fan, can you hear us? Good. Sure. I don't want to. I don't want to be weird about it. Me. <laughs> you know what, Chris Hansen? At your, your door most gentle again. areas. He is a chivalrous. I don't want to give you questions. So let's do this. I'm in the club bouncing. Trying to politic with this bitch, but I'm shouting. So I just let my gold do the talking for me. Diamond shining yellow and white, two tone jewelry. Who is he? Fresh to death. Oh, yes. I'm what's happening now. Don't care what's next. Don't flex. Still, this girl wanna walk up to me. Try and get. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I hope you enjoyed those commercials. Um, but right now, we would like to do a very special and very somber edition of Remember When? Okay. Uh, as we all know, this is the, uh, what is it, five-year anniversary now of the, of the death That's of gotta be, It's got to be more than that. Seven. like seven. Seven? Seventh year anniversary of Eddie Guerrero's death and... Um, one of my fondest memories of Eddie Guerrero um, was kind of happened when WWE came to Pittsburgh for was it Armageddon uh, or No Way Out? No Way Out. It was No Way Out, and it was Eddie Guerrero's last title win, title victory, and it was. Mm-hmm the tag team championships against the Bashams. Now, and I think his partner was uh, Rey Mysterio. I could be wrong, 
I probably am. But that just stuck out to me, like, after he passed away. I just sat there thinking, holy shit, I just, I, I, I was there when Eddie won his last title. And it kind of, you know, brought a little lump in my throat or something like that. I don't know. But it, it was, it was really, Eddie was a true entertainer for his time as well. And it was really sad to see a star like that go quickly. And that's what I remembered. Uh, who wants to tag me up? Uh, I'll do it. I'll tag. I'll, I'll tag. do a little tag. Um, so, yeah, uh, Eddie Guerrero uh, uh, passing away. Um, I have a lot of great Eddie Guerrero memories. Um, I, had, I had seen him once at a uh, SmackDown uh, taping that they had in uh, Corpus Christi. And uh, um, obviously being from Texas, the uh, – you know, us Texas wrestling fans sort of have a fond memory in our hearts for him. Um, I rem- there was a lot of sort of mourning that came from sort of the Texas area uh, when uh, he had passed away. I remember, you know, you don't you that stuff happens every once in a while. But I remember it being like reported on my local news, you know, and you know, and I thought that was just very interesting because you know you don't always see that. Um, but I was, I always was a fan of, uh, Guerrero, um, big fan of his work, uh, from the time I started actually, watching wrestling, you know, did some um, research I, I believe by, no, I don't have it here on campus, but I think back in my, uh, I wish back they would the bring back this I have concept, his, um, I forgot the it was name something they only did but, uh, once, the, the, and I the, thought the documentary it was DVD, awesome. Uh, that they did on it was him. called the um, grand finale match of Phenomenal stuff. Life. That's probably one of my favorite had documentary based uh, sort of DVDs that I have. It, it, it's it's one of my favorites, personally. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, Eddie very fondly, and um, it's it's weird to think it was only seven years ago. Then, like, that seems like a very short where it ended up being uh, amount of time to our friends at WrestlingBay.com. Um, Hulk Hogan, so yeah, the ultimate. Uh, I uh, definitely have fond memories and uh, made me think a lot from uh, this uh, these past seven years. So, uh, so who's next? I'll do it. Um, my uh, my memories of uh, Eddie Guerrero um, start from like really early in his career. The matches he had um, with like Dean Malenko and ECW were uh, were gro- obviously groundbreaking, um, uh, absolutely fantastic, and uh, very unique for their time than things that we were that we were seeing in uh, in the United States. And of course, he went on to have a great career in uh, uh, in WCW and WWE. Um, I, and my other strongest memory about Eddie Guerrero was uh, actually related to this show because um, it was very, very early on in the in, in the life of the Wrestling Mayhem show, um, where I think uh, me and Sorg, it was just the two of us, and we were still just doing the uh, the live streaming uh, and uh, and we got the news that Eddie Guerrero had passed away and it was the first thing that we were like, well, what we have to talk about this. How are we going to talk about it? You know? And it was, it was a very serious subject. We could just bullshit about it. Like, like we did about what happened on raw. And, um, unfortunately it would be the, the first in many stories that we would look at like that. Um, the death of Chris Benoit comes to mind where we all sat down before and said, how are we going to cover this? And what are we going to say? Um, but, uh, yeah, Eddie, the other, the other memory is the the raw um, after he passed away, and uh, the the t- and Bell Loot and uh, all of the wrestlers out there, and specifically Big Show. I remember Big Show um, when they were all standing on the stage, and he was just bawling his eyes out. He just couldn't control himself. Um, so yeah, that's Eddie Guerrero. Sword. Uh, yeah, Eddie. Um Probably my favorite stuff was uh, when he started to get into the lie, cheat, steal thing, and especially the stuff with Chavo. That was probably the most entertaining thing, like the more showmanship, you know. I mean, it was a, it was a character. It was funny. It was a lot of humor to it, you know. Like the, when the time he beat, like I think he beat a uh, current angle at WrestleMania by faking a, a ankle injury and then taking a shoe off. 
<laughs> Remember that? You know, I, I mean, I mean, it was you never knew what was going to happen. And it was more, you know, kind of like how we have weird things going on on, on Slam. Like that was like almost every match with him at the time, you know. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's that and, and the uh, Dominic on a pole match. Because <laughs> it just got so ridiculous. So, what about you there, Josh? Um, yeah, it, it's hard to narrow it down to just like a single moment uh, with with someone like Eddie. Um, because I mean, it, the guy didn't go out there and half-ass anything he did, mm-hmm. and it didn't matter where he was. Everything was all or nothing. And, I I mean, that's pretty much how he lived. So, I mean, you know, um, the moment when, uh, and I forget what pay-per-view it was, which is probably bad because it was probably a huge one, um, where him and uh, Chris Benoit both won titles. Mania, yeah, 20. Mania. Um, that was that was touching, and it, that was pretty awesome. And it really stinks that that's been kind of soured since, because that was a really good moment. Because these guys, it was those two guys like making it, yeah, and mm-hmm. and they were going to be the future. You know what I mean? It was like wow, they actually gave those guys a shot. You know, kind of like today is like wow, they're giving CM Punk and Daniel Bryan a shot. I think those guys really were the Punk and Bryan of their day. Because they were yeah. kind of the underdogs. They were kind of like the guys that were smaller. And it's like, really, these guys are going to give them a run in WWE, you know, um, after they've been kind of put down for how many years? So, I mean, that was that was really good. And, again, it was just really sorry with the whole Benoit situation and see what's happened. So. Uh, it's gonna, it, it sucks in general um, because if you think about it, there's a lot of matches that if they were to release – uh, a best of or like a, a DVD of Eddie Guerrero mm-hmm. that we're not going to see on it because it yeah. because they involve Chris Benoit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people, a lot of people. Yeah. And, and it's going to be uh, some of his best, best stuff. Man, you know, they just did that false count anywhere and I haven't watched the whole thing or anything, but you know, what's missing from that Benoit versus Kevin Sullivan. Those some of my favorite matches from first watching WCW, you know, Oh my God! They're in the bathroom. You know, I mean, that was like those the greatest stuff. Just like <laughs> yeah, cracking, me and my dad just like cracking up at those at those matches. Were like some of my favorite moments in in early you know WCW watching. You know, so I don't know. So well, thanks guys. I think we hit everybody up, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yeah. so. So with that, let's hop over and find out what's going on in Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. Mayhemers, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, so Survivor Series is this weekend. It's one of my favorite times of the year, or at least it used to be when they actually, you know, did Survivor Series matches. But I want to, I wish they would bring back this concept. And it was something they only did once, and I thought it was awesome. It was called the Grand Finale Match of Survival. They had the entire card filled with 5-on-5 elimination matches. Then they took the winners from each of those matches and divided divided them into faces and heels and had that in the main event where it ended up being, according to our friends at WrestlingData.com, Hulk Hogan, The Ultimate Warrior, and Tito Santana beating Ted DiBiase, Rick Martel, the Warlord, Hercules, and Paul Roma. I just think it, it's a really cool concept and something that they could have done with when they had like separate brands of Raw and SmackDown. You could have had, you know, normal 5-on-5 five five matches where you have people feuding with each other against each other, and then... You'd, you'd split them up into Raw and SmackDown, and that's how you probably should have done bragging rights in the first place, but whatever. That's just me. Um, Raw, Raw was, I don't know, it didn't really seem like that good of a go-home show. I thought the 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 bit with CM Punk and uh, Lawler, bit in poor taste, and 
But, I mean, I still laughed. I thought, I thought it was funny as hell. Because you have to know Jerry Lawler agreed to all of that was said. In fact, he may have even made some suggestions on what to say. And plus, when the ambulance showed up later, Lawler said, Oh, my ride's here. I mean, come on. Come on. If he can joke about it, we can all joke about it. Plus, he's fine. That's all that matters. But, uh... Duh. TNA. I listened to the show last night, and you guys forgot there was a pay-per-view. It's okay. Everyone else did, too. Um, the the name that they have for Luke Gallows, Doc, Director of Chaos, or whatever, I, I think it just means downfall of creative. Um, Jeff Hardy won again. Who cares? He's going to fight James Storm. Who cares? And poor AJ Styles is going to be stuck in mid-card hell for a year. Oh well, TNA again doesn't prove what they're, they know what they're doing. But uh, yeah, I'm going to Chikara this weekend. So I will have a report for the Waffle Fan and the Indie Minute. And since I'm off on Sunday, I'm also going to see the Survivor Series live. Which is good, because the last time I saw uh, pay-per-view live was... Shit, it was a while ago. But, um, yeah, so I'm excited. There's a lot of wrestling on tap for me this weekend. Well, this is Mad Mike with a minute. Peace, bitches. Alright, Mike, thanks for your minute of mayhem. Quotations. Um, I, I have to point out that uh, the past two weeks... There have been there has been a moment in Raw, in which I I walk away. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I I say I'm done and I, I pass out. I, essentially, last week I watched Gun sixty seconds. This week I didn't even try. I just went to sleep. I thought that was last week. That's what I said. Last week oh, yeah. I watched. Yeah, Gun last week she watched Gun sixty seconds. Oh, this week I just went to sleep. Okay. Um, and uh, this week it was at the uh, CM Punk came in heart attack. <laughs> I, I gave up and I, I went. Are to we? Sleep. I mean, okay. That, that pissed. Okay, who did that piss off? Let me let me let me preface this with because I wasn't watching Raw live because I was at the Showtime's birthday bash, but I did today. I actually got to see a lot of it. At first, I was offended. But then, like, kind of like how Mad Mike mentioned, uh, apparently, like, Jerry Lawler was sort of laughing some of the stuff off and, you know, the comment about the ambulance and stuff like that. So, to that point, yeah, okay. Was it in poor taste? Probably. But, you know, if I think Jerry probably was okay with that part. The problem that, the thing that I have the problem with was the promo video that they played. Hmm. Yeah. That because was I'm, See, that, I'm sorry. That's what I'll argue with you about. Okay, but hold on. Because I'm sorry. I, I really don't want to see, like, clinically dead Jerry Lawler, like, trying to be revived with, like, sad music playing in the background and, like, heartbeat noises playing. I can do without that, WWE. Like, honestly. That's, that's, that's me. Okay. You're Lunchbox, you can go ahead. I argue – well, I let me first say that to a certain degree I agree with you uh, because I don't want to see that either. Um, on the flip side of that, I will say uh, look at a company like CNN or MSNBC. Mm -hmm. If uh, – I don't remember which one Anderson Cooper is on, but he's who I'm going to use as my example. If uh, in the middle of a live show, Anderson Cooper had a heart attack – and uh, it all happened on camera, and they brought in, you know, paramedics and had to shock him on air, and all that happened. Uh, they would play that footage uh, every ten minutes until Anderson Cooper came back on the air, and then they would show it to him uh, at least ten times and make him talk about it. And that's what they can do. MSNBC or CNN, they can do that because it's an exclusive news story that happened on their time on their air and they have control over it they are the That's first one to get it and 
they completely own the footage. It's exclusive. It's like an orgasm yeah. for them. Yeah, it, and it's it, the same that's, thing that's with enough. WWE. It's, it's they, they have full control over the situation, the, so they're going to use it as much and as effectively as they know how. That's fair enough. Okay. Um, and but hold on, hold on, let me just say this real quick. Yes, I agree. That is, and but at the same time, that's also kind of a bit in bad taste. If CNN What's were an to awful do it. taste. Let, uh, no, uh, yeah, absolutely. But the second, the thing is. You're, we're talking about WWE, you know, and I get that. CNN, you know, or absolute, I absolutely agree with you. The problem is that is the same – look at the stuff we've seen in the past. Think of like, for example, where a heel wrestler like injures someone, storyline rise. And don't remember like on Raws or on Smackdowns constantly. They play like dramatic music and there's this, you know, slow-mo of stuff and stuff like that. It's kind of like what they did. The problem is, the problem I have with it, it's going to allow fans that do not understand wrestling to that degree, and maybe not necessarily, either the smart fans or even not the smart fans, you know, maybe even the internet fans. It's allowing them to say, wait, so is this a work? So is this real? Because that stuff isn't real. I think, I think the more you put that question mark in a fan's head, the more the wrestling company benefits. Yeah. Uh, isn't and that what they That's not a good on. thing, though. Totally. No, it, it, sure, they it, benefit. It, it's not a good thing or, or not, but it's a profitable thing. And that's... Yeah, is what, it, is it well, the realism, the thing that they want to do? Yeah. Well, yeah. then what happens when someone has a heart attack and it, they do that? And it's a real story. And you notice what they did is they showed the footage. They showed the real footage. They showed the fact, like, look, he was dead. Look, this happened, and then they have CM Punk come out, and, and they have him carted out in an ambulance, just like a lot of stuff they do. Yeah, yeah, it looked exactly like when they cart somebody out in the ambulance for an angle, right? Exactly. Um, what, what, that's what, my what, point. What were they it's supposed cool. to do? Were they supposed to ignore the whole situation? No, just pretend that it, oh, here's, it happened. Play the footage. Hold on, of hold, on, hold, on hold on, let's shut Chachi. Let's shut Chachi speak. Here, here's my thing, and uh, it, my rebuttal to you, uh, Papa Lunchbox. Uh, just because you have the footage doesn't make it right that you show the footage. Uh, I completely agree with you. I I 100% agree with you. I'm not defending what they did. I'm just saying that that's that's the practice. That's that's what ex- it, what's expected. Right. It's that's shitty. Common. That's common. It is the practice, is but. Yes. We don't have to to put up with it. Is this, yeah, exactly. Is this any different than the poor chase, choice decisions we've seen in the past from WWE? Well, the WWE whole WWE has never yes, been exactly a, a symbol of integrity. No, no. My whole thing is is the uh, the original footage that they used to start off with mixed with the Heyman heart attack. Mm-hmm. Made for a poor segment that should have been a celebration and not a laughing joke. The pro okay. I agree with that if as you, well. If you want to look at the actual segment, I had the problem up to the point where Heyman had the fake heart attack and Punk throws up the X's sort of in a mocking way. Um because that's another reason for people to sort of oh, to expose the whole X thing. So if he throws up the X's, what does it mean? But I liked everything before that with Punk coming out. I like I love the part where uh, Punk said, "Yeah, I'm getting all of these uh, m- emails and tweets blaming me for the reason that Jerry Lawler had a heart attack because I wrestled him that night. Uh, maybe you should blame Jerry Lawler because he's 62 years old and got in a ring." And got in a ring. That part I liked because that was CM Punk. Why are we okay? <laughs> oh, why are we watching <laughs> that this? Was CM Punk being CM Aww. Punk. Yeah, the fake, the fake heart attack. I thought they were going to do that same shit with Paul Heyman. Oh God! <laughs> Holy shit! No, that's <laughs> a broken leg. Why are we leg. watching Holy this? Holy fuck, man! Why did why you are show you watching that? that? Why the why fuck would you show that? Did you not pay that? attention to us? Just because you have the footage doesn't mean you should show the footage. Listen, exactly. we had a request in the chat room. This is an interactive show. Uh, Texas Anarchy said, I need a palate cleanser from this. Someone please post the video of Sid's broken leg. If you had the footage, why the hell would you show that? Because I was asked to. And he's saying yes, yes, yes in the chat room. 
Okay, and with the punk thing, the only thing that would have like made that that section better, like like Jerry Lawler, maybe you shouldn't have stepped into the ring at sixty two and faced me. But also, I would have loved if Punk would just be like, also, let's go to this Jumbotron and show the footage or show the pictures that you posted of you eating a steak in your uh, hospital room after coming out of surgery. Or this photo of you like munching down on a bunch of wings. Okay. No! Oh, come on. Again, what is wrong with you? Okay. uh, First (laughs) off, first off, wrestle fan, uh, the steak I'll give you. Yes, I completely agree with you. Maybe you shouldn't have been eating a steak coming out of surgery. He's king. All right. I love the king. However, mm-hmm. with the wings, you don't know how many of those things he ate. <laughs> he could have had like two been, or three. It could have been lean wings. Like, I mean, the owner of the restaurant could have been like, oh, you, you got to try these wings. <laughs> and Barton, like, fuck that owner. I'm said, sorry. Hey, right. I oh, but I mean, Listen, it, 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 one or two. must be so good. I know I just had a heart attack like three weeks ago, but I'm going to try your wings anyways. Hey, you offer hey, everything hey. is fine in moderation. Listen, listen, listen. Jerry Lawler is the most yellow guy you're going to meet, okay? Uh, he, is, he is very yellow. No, YOLO. Like, yeah. y- YOLO. YOLO. Oh. I thought you said yellow. No, uh, was like, well, what, he, he is very he yellow. He is, he is very yellow. Remind me to smack the shit out of you after the show for using that term. I saw a kid with a t-shirt, and I kind of wanted to do the same thing to him uh, today. Can, right. also, uh, can, yeah. also, can I also note one more thing about Jerry Lawler? Hmm. So do I have to be quiet on the fact that I don't want him on commentary anymore? Oh, uh, no, no. I AJ, don't. AJ was all over that as soon as he started talking again. So, uh, Seriously, I think, I think right. uh, JR is a better choice. I think we can. Yeah, yeah. That. I think uh, we, not even that he's a better choice. It's just Jerry <laughs> Lawler is not good on commentary. Bottom line. Mm. Anyone. Josh Matthews would be better than Jerry Lawler. Mm. Like, honestly, it's I still think I still think Cole is the problem in that equation. Jr. and King were fine. Uh, Cole and King is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they bicker. Jr. and King, they I could say Jr. and King bicker a bit, but Jr. still played the middle, you know. With Cole and Lawler, they're just picking sides and then defending it. But the problem is, like, Lawler is the one that sort of, oh, great, Lawler's back now. We got fat jokes about Vicky Guerrero again. Now we've got him, you know, pointing out the fact, oh, just in case you didn't know, Del Rio's Mexican. Another fine example of the awesome choices that WWE makes. I I don't understand why we're talking about a heart attack angle when that wasn't the worst thing on the show. What was that? The worst thing on the show was the insufferable fucking they had an affair shit. That yeah. was really bad. Why? So Jerry Springer. It's, I don't get it. Not it's even good funny. Jerry Springer. It's terrible. Somebody said two bad words of the, the Survivor Series lineup, and they changed the whole fucking thing. But this scandal shit is still going on. It's the worst thing I've ever seen on WWE television since Triple H had the first hour of Raw every week month of sundays yeah but i don't the, really know what that means the <laughs> good thing about that moment about the those the uh thing about the the fair or lack thereof or whatever they're doing okay. is that dolph ziggler was in the ring for 38 minutes <laughs> Yeah, Dolph Ziggler opened the show. That's great. You know, for 38 I love, minutes. I love, hold on, 38 I love the fact minutes. That, I love the fact that they're starting Raw with a match. You know, that's great. But the, I, and um, I think Brandon Stroud pointed this out. The, the the problem with that angle is that even if they revealed this whole oh Cena did have sex with AJ, everyone would just be like, okay, like why is that a big deal? It's why not it an affair. They're not married. They're, yeah, no, it's not a fair either. But it's also <laughs> oh my god. But it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm sorry, like, there's great videos being put in the chat room that completely go right along to demonstrate our points. But um oh, oh Brandon Stroud also got a brought a good point. So Vince was the one that hired AJ as general manager. She was in a three-way relationship with people, with CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and Kane. Like, so because she goes out on one date with John Cena, nope, now you're fired. That's crossing the line. 
It's it doesn't not where make the any logic sense. fails it's a waste the worst. of time. The place that the logic fails the worst is uh, it's it, it shows that they have sitcom writers on the creative team because it, this is a si- situation you see on shitty sitcoms where one sentence can clear up everything. When Vicky played the recordings, all AJ had to say was, "Oh, that's not from a voicemail. That's from this." Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Just fucking explain. Just say, "Oh no, that's actually from this." No, I was knocking on this person's door. I mean, this it, it's it makes me have nosebleeds. It makes me have nosebleeds. And if they hadn't so early in the show, I would have shut it off and went to bed. So, uh, and the worst is that yes, they are sitcom like writers, but they're also trying to be wrestling writers where they span this thing out over four weeks. Why doesn't Vicky just reveal all this evidence on one night? <laughs> so, side note. What the hell is going on in the chat room right now? There's, There's lots a lot of, of videos video. going on. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the question is, when did WWE became, become TNA? First, they, they, they got the same voiceover it's guy not. the last few weeks. Further, last time further than on. yesterday. What, why are they emulating the 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 very low-end second uh, uh, oh, to them? You know what? Actually, uh, WWE became TNA last week when Vince came out and said, Ride back! Title shot! Yeah. Survivor Series. You did absolutely nothing. Hey, you know this match we set up? Yeah, it's going to change now. Yeah, it, it, that's that's exactly it. You can tell that something bad is happening to WWE right now in the writing department. No right? one can lie and say yeah. that. And you know what it is? And you know what it is? Oh, my God, we got three hours on Monday to fill. <laughs> wait, we, we, wait. We have main event to do something with. We got... What? Children's matches? Did they hire Vince Russo back? I might as well have. I'd probably Is that do what's better happening? than this going on. Holy crap. Ugh. Is Vince so, Russo back? Uh, if, if AJ is having John Cena's baby, I quit. <laughs> I quit. Yeah, I was waiting for the pregnancy angle on this one. I yeah. Let's have AJ pretend if, to be if, pregnant for a if few If AJ turns great. Claire Lynch, I quit. Oh, uh, Vicky just I, Vicky's just gonna come out. He's like, you know what? I was digging through the trash and I got a hold of this positive pregnancy test. Woo doo! It like, must be yours. Woo woo doo! Even like that, even day. if they wrote it well, it would be more interesting than the shit that they're putting on television now. <laughs> is yeah. it the writers or is it the performers at this point? It's the writers. No, it's not the performers. I think it's right. John Cena is doing, I, I, and I did, don't. This isn't something I say often. John Cena is doing a great job okay, with and terrible Bo, material. Bo F. Diggity uh, says, hey, I'm not pregnant. My boy wife is. Thank you. Oh, thank you. there we go. He's also, better me. active than on WWE. Bo Diggity's name is AJ. Yeah. So I on that it. note, we, we kind of went along with the indie minutes, so we're going to have to get out of here. So real quick, I have a feeling it's going to be mostly negative. Tell me what you learned from wrestling this week, Papa Lunchbox. Up a lunchbox. That's me. Yes, it is. Uh, I learned that uh, Brad Maddox pays a guy uh, to walk around him for, I think it was half an hour, 45 minutes, just filming. Yeah, that was weird. Just I was really like, weird. Was ready in the back. That was really weird. Yeah. Well, no, they kept, they kept saying that he, was, he had been filmed all day. <laughs> I want to leave this camera on you in case you do something. Me? Interesting. <laughs> oh, Interesting. Yeah. Chachi, I want to dance, follow monkey, you. dance. Well, stand beside your cubicle with a camera pointed at you in case you do something interesting. Okay? All right. He's probably not. Fair but. enough. Project, it's, it's Project Chach. And the Project sad thing Chach is, way. people would watch the more. More people would watch that than are going to watch Brad Maddox. We're going to set up a webcam in your bedroom. You know what I learned for, from wrestling? What? I learned that, uh, number one, uh, WWE can fuck up a, a serious event. Um, yep. Number two, they found a creative way for Ryback to beat jobbers. Mm-hmm. And yet, that's still all he's doing, but he has a title shot. Two! Two title shots! Because Vince, he, he blew Vince in the back. Mm. <laughs> Russell fan. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week because I had to do investigating on Raw since I was not watching Raw for being at because uh, I was at an indie show, um, and 
though this all through all this investigating of Raw, so you know all that stuff. I still can't find out the reason why Brad Maddox had the word beef mode on his uh, tights. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think and that's going to still remain a mystery. No, it's not a mystery because that's... And his... He, his uh, former character was Beef Wellington, which leads me to what feet. I learned. Which they wouldn't get him new tights? I learned... They wouldn't get him Brad Maddox I learned tights. that sometimes you have to write on your hand... Punch and on your foot kick <laughs> to remember so what you they're for. Don't confuse them. Wait, what? Well, one one leg was had kick. Was it? Was it jump? The other one had jump. <laughs> so he was either kicking with one leg, or and jumping with the other. Repeat. So they literally. On they literally point. were just like, yeah, we're going to give you this like big match on Raw, but we're not going to get you new tights for your old gimmick. Nope. nope. Wow. Nope. nope. Yeah, he's been around that's, since the that's OVW like days. Le- that's, I'm sorry, that's like indie level shit. He, he, he's been around since the OVW days. He was the last uh, FCW 15 champion. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So Brad Maddox has been, a lo- been around about as long or longer as Ryback? Then I think about as long as I, I. What was that one tweet that went out last night that was like, "Consider that Ryback is the seasoned veteran in this match." Yes. As far as WWE mm-hmm. goes, he's been in WWE longer. Yeah. But yeah, this guy's been developmental apparently for ages, and apparently he's not a good wrestler. And at one point, <laughs> when he changed his name to Beef Wellington, he became a necrophiliac as a character, mm-hmm. according to his Wikipedia page. So yeah, I hope they don't bring that around. Um, on, uh, who, who's Chad, wait, or, hold on, hold on. I'm okay with them bringing back the uh, necrophilia <laughs> angle <laughs> if. He somehow kills and fucks Ryback. Is okay with manager going to be uh, Katie Vick? Riz, have you learned anything? Apparently not, since you guys just skipped me. But um, no, fuck yeah, you. I, I learned that uh, WWE doesn't really have had a really slow news day because they posted that Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler. Oh no. Oh, no, and they didn't. that they could be that he could have been the world heavyweight champion. Where is this? It's on WWE.com. And by the way, the by the way, uh, as far as the fuck, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I just I came to this and we have this uh, very tabloid version. What? Scandal! But they Scandal! did this. Remember the old WWE Confidential? They did a, t- the, a cover like this when they put the DVD out for it. So they're yeah. like they're trying to be tabloidy. You know what I mean? So because that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, in the chat room, uh, Bo Diggity learned that I can still stab people in the face on the internet. Uh, Call of Duty is out, assholes. Wrap it up. Uh, the Wrestling Revolution learned that WWE is not interesting enough right now to make me watch Raw. Man Dorties learned that there might be a Brad Maddox sex tape, and Russell Fan has an indie rape dungeon. <laughs> Wow. Also, this is the greatest um, picture from last night. Was sad, yeah, like, sad punk. No. Sad punk. Uh, Mad Mike learned that AJ Styles is going to have a really shitty year. Uh, he also learned that it gets mm-hmm. easier and easier to make myself on WWE video games every year. Uh, Man Dirty's also learned that Brad Maddox is a pap- Parappa, the Rappa fan. Um, Bobby FJ no, Town learned that. A- Punch. Okay, uh, fine. Okay, fine. You know what to do. Um, Bobby of J-Town learned that Alberto Del Rio still believes in snail mail and that the best love triangle in WWE is Kane, Miz, and Daniel Bryan. Uh, I think that's it. Yes, that is all the fans learned this week. Excellent. And with that, again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Mike Munns at the Munns, if you want to see what he's talking about. Uh, also, uh, hey, we're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We'll be posting all the emails from this episode. WrestleFan, thank you a lot for, uh, for doing that. It's been uh, really good the last few weeks uh, getting those up. Uh, iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher, and what was the other one? Spreaker. 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 Spreaker, Spreaker. is the other one. Spreaker. Drop us a line at? 
Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Also, 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Uh, WMS Gold app, pick it up. Dollar 99 support the show on your iOS app store or oh, Amazon no, no, no. app store. Yeah, Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Oh, they got it. Poured it on my butt. Yeah, poured out his butt. Um, <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Uh, go check everybody out at Riz IUP, at Shachi Says, at The Wrestle Fan, and at DJ Lunchbox. I am at Sorgatron. We'll see you at next week. Wrestle. Happy stab in the face day. Mayhem show out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the